Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Um, Raquel Mateus Silva, BTV. Uh, I would like to ask you about your expectations for the match tomorrow and if Di Maria and Ba are ready to play. Thank you. Yeah, my expectations. I think we will see a top, top football match. So I think two very good teams are playing against uh, each other. I think now I have some experience also um, with these matches. So it's the first time. We play against each other and all the matches were very difficult, um, very demanding. Um, but we also got a lot of experience in these matches, so I think we are in a very good uh, shape. The, the vibe in the team is, is very good, the atmosphere, so a lot of players are in a very good shape. Um, all, the all the players were in training today, so of course we have some small issues, but um, yeah, later in the afternoon I'll make a decision what is the squad for tomorrow. But uh, right now we are um, top prepared for this match, and of course it's our it's our stadium. It's a top match. We can we can um, in the direct um, match we can uh, win uh, three points um, regarding uh, Porto, and of course there's a big big chance for us. So that's how we see the match, and we know we have to play on top level because they will do it also. Um, but we are ready for that. Hello, Mr. Schmidt, Consorge Gestas, SIC. I wanted to ask you, you, you've been here since the beginning of the last season. Uh, you already saw a lot of matches from FC Porto. Of course, you uh, prefer to, to talk about Benfica. But I wanted to ask you about uh, uh, which do you think is the main characteristic of uh, FC Porto, your opponent tomorrow, and uh, which is the, the best weakness for the Benfica to, to explore uh, in tomorrow's match? You also said uh, some issues in the team. Uh, can you be more specific, please? Of course, I cannot go into the details, <laughs> tactical-wise, but um, your question is um, what is the, the strength of Porto? So Porto is a, is a team who wins a lot of matches. So that's the first point. So they have a winner mentality and they are tactical-wise very disciplined. So all the players, they put a lot of effort in being part of the team tactic. And of course, they have a lot of individual quality. So that's all the teams who are winning a lot of games and playing for titles, so that are the characteristic you need. Um, so they show that um, every week, even in difficult moments, they are able to to win games. So I think that's, that says everything. So and it's not only in Portuguese league; it's also in international football, and um, that's why it is difficult to play against them. Hi, coach. João Pedro Roca, TV CNN. Uh, Porto won the last two classics in the Stade de Luz. Uh, what is the impact of these two defeats in the players? If can this mess with the players' minds for tomorrow's match? Well, these matches are history, so um, you always can find some some statistics to talk about in in the media. But that's your job. So my job is to to see each single match. So if we want to win tomorrow, it has nothing to do with the last matches. Uh, not last season, not the season before, has nothing to do with the Super Tassa this season where we won, has nothing to do that we won also last season in Porto. So these matches are not um, uh, decisive for tomorrow. So tomorrow is a new match, is a new start. Uh, from the first minute you have to be ready for the game and you have to think about your match plan, about your, your tactical uh, approach. Um, and then both approaches, they, they, will, uh, they will be um, um, on the pitch. And then, of course, the team who is able to, uh, yeah, to, to dominate, to find the right moments, also to influence the game in a positive way. And then at the end, um, there's a winner of the game. So that's my, my um, conviction always. So I'm not, not really thinking about what happens in the past. So that's not what, uh, what is in my head. So um, I think the situation now is like it is with the Discord, with the players who are in, in in shape, um, and it's, it's the same with Porto. And both uh, teams will be very good prepared for tomorrow, very good uh, motivated. Um, they give everything, and um, we want to be the team who has uh, at the end the three points.
Hi, Roger. Gonçalo Batista, CMTV here. Uh, Truben is expected to play tomorrow as he played in the last matches. Uh, you already said in the past that he was a bit nervous in the, the past games. Uh, he didn't have also a great performance against Salzburg in the Champions League uh, uh, in front of a packed stadium of full uh, Stadio da Luz. Uh, this time he will make his debut uh, in a Clásico against Porto. Uh, do you, are you worried about the possibility of his nerves affecting his performances again? Thank you. No, for me he's not nervous at all. So in, in my opinion he's uh, very calm. So um, also against uh, Salzburg, first match against uh, in our stadium was not the best start. But uh, um, during the match I think he was he was calm. He was able also to to focus on what he has to do on the pitch, and that's uh, what he has to do also tomorrow. I think. Each single match will help him to get more used to to everything, to Benfica, to the teammates, and of course also to to our stadium. But I think he's very motivated, and I see not a not a goalkeeper who is who is nervous or who is thinking too much about these topics. So he's very good prepared from our goalkeeping coaches, and um, so I have the big big confidence he will play a good game tomorrow. Hello, coach Antonio Pedro Carvalho, uh, in direct for RTP. In your opinion, Benfica is more uh, start this game more pressure because they are behind Porto in this moment in the in the league. Uh, for me, it's more the I see more the chance. Huh? So, uh, of course, um, to to become like I al al always uh, say, and I uh, did it already a few times here in press conference, to become champion in Portugal is not easy because you have to get a lot of points and. So that means the top teams then don't lose a lot of points uh, against other teams. So that means in the direct uh, duels you can you can always make the difference. And uh, of course that's why it's a big chance for both teams to to win three points. And that means the other team get nothing. So uh, I think that's always the special thing with these games. And so I see more the chance than any pressure because pressure we have every every single match we have pressure. It doesn't matter where we play uh, away. Uh, at home against top teams or other teams, so I think that make not a difference. There are always three points to to get, and we we need the three points. Uh, Mr. Schmitz, good afternoon. Uh, sorry, I didn't understand if uh, Bay and Di Maria if they were fit for the game, and um, also uh, if uh, in in your thoughts, the, uh, David Nersch, he could be in the team with Di Maria. Uh, because of the midfield, uh, Mr. Schiff. Thank you. So the, all the team, has, all the team, uh, all the players were in team training today. So that was the, the first question. Um, yeah, of course. I think it is always a question of um, of balance and also of the of the shape of the players and uh, the tactical approach. Also a little bit the opponents. So I think there are a lot of uh, different. Um, Topics to make decisions uh, regarding the the lineup. Sometimes also to have good um, um, options also on the bench. And um, but at the end, uh, of course, everything is possible. Also that they um, um, play together. At the end, you need always the balance and um, the players. They have to be ready to to play play a reliable uh, tactical football. Huh? So that is always the the main topic because I think that's why we became champion last season because I think tactical wise, as a team, we were always um, very concentrated and very um, connected, and that's what we have to uh, what we have to achieve every every. Um, match, especially in top matches, and um, so um, yeah. To, for tomorrow, we need a good decision, a good first starting eleven, and we need top top uh, players from the bench. Good afternoon, Mr. Rita, from the Journal Record. Jurasek played uh, last match. Uh, does that mean that Alshnas can move up on the pitch tomorrow? Yeah, he played because uh, he's fit again, uh, and he needs match practice. And of course, we have to we have to give the players match practice when it is possible. And I think he comes from a longer injury. Um, now he's back. Um, we have different options. Juan Bernard is also now for four weeks in in, in in training. He's better and better. So we create new options. Um, but of course, I always have to. Consider which player is is ready also to play on uh, a match like 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 tomorrow. But uh, David is doing better and better, and I think the 45 minutes in Portimonense were very good for for him. And um, of course, he's an op he's an option for tomorrow. 
tarde. Uh, Ricardo Miguel Gonçalves, 00. Uh, have you decided uh, who's going to play alongside uh, Otamendi? Is it uh, Antonio Silva or Morato? Because uh, obviously uh, Antonio Silva being suspended in, the, in Europe, Morato is going to have to play midweek, so is Morato's rhythm more important uh, or Antonio Silva back in the 11? Thank you. Yeah, until now I haven't decided anything for tomorrow, so because I have still time, so um, I think, like you said, we have now um, more options, so uh, of course I know about the situation next week at uh, Inter Milan, but uh, of course tomorrow is important to focus on tomorrow, not, on, uh, not to look too much uh, forward. And um, all the players at the moment doing very well, so in training, so we have four very good centre-backs with Tomas Arroyo, Morato, Nico and Antonio. We need all these uh, centre-backs, Morato did it well now in the last uh, two matches when he came in against Salzburg mm -hmm. and also and Sportimonenso, so that's good for us that we have also uh, concurrence and uh, players um, with match practices. And for tomorrow, I have to make a decision, but I haven't done it yet.